So I just got back from the store um, from getting chicken feed. And I think I kind of wanted to touch on a subject that is my current situation. All of you who already have homesteads and have been doing this for years, this will not matter one hill of beans to you. But for those of us who are just starting out uh, or are thinking about starting out, I will tell you I am impatiently being patient. Um, you almost come to a point where you kind of feel like you're at a crossroads of, should I keep doing this or should I just let this go because this is costing me money? Um, and I'm right there. I'll quit fiddling with my keys. Um, I'm right there. But I think the reason why is because, you know, I've said before, my chickens are still not laying, which they're not. They're still not laying. And every morning I have to, you know, swallow that disappointment of going in and finding no eggs. Uh, I know it's going to happen. It's just a game of weight. That's kind of the way I've noticed everything is about homesteading so far. It's a game of weight. Wait for bread to rise. Wait for your garden. Wait for your chickens to lay. And, you know, when you follow other uh, YouTubers that have established homesteads, you kind of almost, it's not intentional on their part in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Um, but it's almost like a game of smoke and mirrors, really. And the reason I say that is because one YouTuber I follow uh, got silky chicks. I was so enamored with them. I was like, oh my gosh, these are so cute. Well, that I saw all that video and then, you know, I'm watching videos about cows later and about gardens later and about mulching and, you know, all these millions of other videos in between. And then and the next thing I know, I see a video that is of the silky chicks now being parents and raising chicks. And I'm just like, it just seems like it happens so much faster th for them, but it doesn't. It does not. Um, it's just because you're seeing, they have so many other things going on that you're seeing all these progressions and it just feels like it's happening fast, but it's really not. I actually went back and checked the date and it was it was a space, a, a large space of time from the time. I think it was actually almost a year um, from getting her chicks to having chicks. So I think that has some to do with why you get so impatient. And another reason is because, you know, when I started this, I dished out like six, seven hundred dollars to fence. Um, I've spent money on seeds. I've spent money on gardening tools. I bought a tiller. I blew money on the pony. She has been my only somewhat return. I spent a hundred dollars on her, but all the feed, the hay, the extra wood to redo stalls, um, her bridle, all the stuff that I bought for her. I bought her for a hundred, but I sold her for four. But all the other stuff that I kind of really, I think I made like 60 bucks <laughs> off of her, which is still a return. And I'm not going to complain about that. But so far, I mean, I've spent a lot of money in chickens. Um, right now I have 14 chickens. Beth, my cousin Beth is going to probably, I talked to her last night. She is probably going to take roof for me um, and just kind of get him in a different environment away from his enabler and see if that helps with his attitude. If it does not, if he continues with his attitude, I just have to realize and tell myself, this is not a pet. This is a farm animal. He will do what he does. There is nothing you can do to stop an aggressive rooster, and I will butcher him. Plain and simple. Um, no matter how hard that is, because I had him from little baby baby, uh, but I will I will butcher a room if if he goes to her house and he does not do any better um, with different environment, different hens, no enabler. If he still is just as crazy, then I will do that. Um, like I said in the other video, if I do have to butcher Rue or even the fact that he is leaving, it is still not going to leave me. Um, roosterless. I still have Bluey and Bluey can still breed the Morans and then I will end up with Olive Eggers. I don't know if any of you guys follow Amy from Fuels Homestead on Facebook, 
but she is dying for all of Edgar chickens. <laughs> and I told her, I don't care if I have to drive to Virginia when I have all of Edgar chicks, I am bringing her some, period. She's getting some. I'm tired of seeing her have that desire and know all of Edgar chicks. It's going to happen. I'm going to get her some. So I will get all of Edgar's. I will get, I will still get my, um, crested leg bars. So, and I still have my Buff Orpington mama. I'm hope I'm pretty much, I'm keeping Buffy. Uh, the eggs are going to be great, but I've heard that they're fantastic broody mamas. So I'm pretty much keeping Buffy for that reason. Buffy, I'm hoping will raise my babies. And you know, um, Beth does have a silver duck wing baby chicken who is rooster who is literally like no joke he's like as small as tinky so i will probably make them a separate little love shack and put tinky and him in there together and i will probably try to breed out some little tiny micro chickens so i still have plans even if they do not include my rudels i am sad that he is the way he is i hate that it happened but it is what it is he is a farm animal he is not a pet this is not like i'm talking about a cat you don't eat cat you eat roosters <laughs> um but all in all you know i just i'm struggling a little bit with the patience aspect of this i'm i feel like i'm having some farmers like the ones that do have a lot of things going on they're like oh you know we never have time we're always doing this or this or this or this but when you first start out and like i've said before i don't think i made a bad decision by starting out small just to get my feet wet the first year and then after that build up and go and move on so i think the hardest part is just seeing how busy they are and all these things and I'm just like waiting on the garden so I can learn to can waiting on the chicken so I can sell eggs you know I I have all these plans and ideas and, and desires to do these things but it's it's slow <laughs> and it takes time and it's just, it is what it is. And so I guess I just wanted to tell you guys a quick encouragement, not just for you, but for myself, that this will be worth it in the end. This is going to be worth it. Just hang in there. I know it can be slow. I know it can be boring. Um, but once I get everything rolling, I may have more stuff on my table, on my plate than what I was expecting. And, <laughs> um, you know, just to keep going toward the the ultimate goal. My ultimate goal is to sell our house. Our ultimate goal is to become debt free. Our ultimate goal is to move somewhere and be able to be completely self sustained, or at least eighty percent. I would like to be eighty percent self sustained. But these skills are not learned overnight. These skills are not um, acquired overnight. They take time, and I just unfortunately have to be one of those people who are having to learn as we go and I don't have a lot of um, teachers behind me I have some I know I have several people that can teach me a little in each area but nobody who can show me the ropes like I was not born into this like some people are and most of the people that are born into it they go off and they just go at it full throttle and I can't do that because I have to learn so I guess that is just pretty much what I wanted to tell you keep plugging at it I'm going to keep plugging at it. Don't worry if it's it's slow going. It will be worth it in the end. These chickens will lay at some point in their life. You know, my garden is going to produce. I am going to get to learn to can. And next year, I can really dig deep and get some serious stuff going. Love you guys. Have a great rest of the week. I will try not to blab so much next video. <laughs> See ya.